Do you want to blame the user, Mr. Clinton? Do you think that's a bunch of bullshit, Mr. Clinton? Do you think Apple should have to cover this problem for their users, Mr. Clinton? Do you think they should have to pay, Mr. Clinton? What do you think, boy? Out of comments? Mr. Clinton. I did a video about a few months ago saying, today I'm going to predict the future. And I told you exactly what I thought was going to happen with the iPhone 6 and the touch issue. The same thing that happens every single time. We produce an amazing product. People love it. People buy it. They realize that there is this common failure mode that's happening, even though they don't seem to be doing anything wrong. That common failure mode is shared amongst many people until hundreds of thousands of people realize they have the same problem. Apple declines that a failure exists. It gets picked up by the media. Apple magically acknowledges that a failure exists. There's an extended warranty program released and consumers get their stuff fixed. Can we fast forward to what has happened every single time throughout their history, whether it's with the 2007 and 2008 A12 26 and A12 60 MacBook Pros, whether we're talking about the 820-2850 motherboard and the kernel panicking issue that I talked to you about caused by a tantalum cap of a poor rating used on C9560, or the A12 86 boards from 2011 with the AMD GPU, or the A1398, machines with an A20-3332 board with the graphics chip issues from 2012, or the AMD Fire Pro issues from 2013, or the iPhone 5 power button issues from a few years ago, which by the way should have been covered on the 4 and the 4S because they had atrocious power buttons as well. Can we just fast forward to the part where they admit that there's something wrong with this, that maybe a phone that costs four times as much as my cheap ass Motorola shouldn't bend, that if I do this, my touch IC shouldn't break. I can take this and just, it's still gonna work. Like, look at this, look at this fucking, look at this. Just check this out. Look, it's fine, absolutely fine. Look, no crack, it's great, it's amazing. And yet for some reason, on a device that costs four times as much. You're using it wrong. You're putting it in your pocket wrong. You're holding it wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yet for some reason with my $150 piece of shit, I'm always using it right. I'm throwing it against the wall right. I'm bashing it into the floor properly. I'm, I'm, spilling, I'm uh, dropping it into the dishes that I'm washing properly. Always works. Why? Let's just fast forward to the part where we're all happy. Because this is what happens every single time. Every single time we go to this argument about how there is no defect. Then Apple fans admit that there is a defect. But they say that the defect is caused because you're using it wrong. And then the media gets involved and then more and more people become outraged. And then finally there's a resolution. I don't want to see a resolution to iPhone 6 Touch at the end of 2018. <laughs> I'd like to see it now. The extended warranty program for the screwed up 2011 MacBook Pros, 2011 machine, that was released around April or May, somewhere around there, of 2015. It took four years to release that. There were people on Mac Rumors, and I remember these threads, I remember these threads vividly because everybody was saying, you're out of your mind, you're making up these tests, blah, blah, blah. This is one guy, one sensible guy or girl that posted a thread saying, my H1286 from 2011, it seems to throttle out of the box. If I do certain things with it, it throttles, and this is not after getting stuck up with dust. It runs kind of hot compared to older models. I don't know what I'm feeling about this. And I agreed. And then years and years later, everybody's saying, no, this is bullshit. No, blah, blah, blah. Now you're using it wrong. Extended warranty. Still in effect today. The machine that you can kill watching YouTube at 360p, the A202915. Can we simply fast forward? Can we fast forward past the part where you go to an Apple store and they go, they look at your phone, it's not, no touch. We don't acknowledge this as an, as an, as an issue. Therefore, I can't help you with it. 
Oh, what do you know? It's working again. Oh, your phone seems to work again. There doesn't even seem to be an issue at all. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, I didn't do much with it. I just, you know, a little... And yeah, it's just perfect spick and span. No, no, no need to leave a tip. No need to leave a tip. No, 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 no. This is why we're here. We are here to service you, the end user, with top quality customer service from our retail facility. Here you go. But when you come back next week, because it's... <clears throat> Which, by the way, they don't acknowledge as an issue. They don't acknowledge as an issue. So it was pure fucking coincidence that when you went to the Apple store that the genius that you met with was doing this with your phone. Pure fucking coincidence. Is that when you come back next week with the same problem, your only option is an out-of-warranty replacement at $349. And check it out. That out-of-warranty replacement at $349, that out-of-warranty replacement is using a motherboard that's coming from another phone. Not a new one. Not a board with a fixed issue, not a board with something to strengthen that area, not a different touch IC. A board that came out of another phone that's actually used, that's this close to having a bad touch IC. A phone that may have been refurbished because they were not able to bend the case back, because you know, if you know, if you go to the store and your case is too far bent, but the phone still works, they won't offer you the screen repair at 109, they'll offer you phone replacement, out of warranty replacement at 349. So that phone that got dropped and dropped and dropped and bent as a motherboard, that was taken out, salvaged. It was going to go into your phone. That's what you're going to get offered. Can we simply fast forward past all that? Can we just look at history and actually support the product? Because here's the thing, you know, people are going to say, oh, look, no, look, they released an extended warranty program for the, for the 2011 MacBook Pro. They did it. Look, they did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In April of 2015, after hundreds of thousands of people had already spent 600 bucks getting it fixed. After hundreds of thousands of people just chucked to the machine and bought a new one, they took that $2,700 investment that they bought, and they just cut their losses on it. How many people cut their losses? How many people are never going to take advantage of that program? And how many people are not going to take advantage of the upcoming iPhone 6 Touch IC extended warranty if it gets released at the end of 2018? Yeah, you can say that you released the program. Yeah, you supported your customers. You know, five years after the phone is obsolete. Like, let's just do it now. Let's just do it. Because there are so many people that are going to stick by that product. They don't care that each iteration has something else wrong with it. They're not going to care. Let's see an iPhone do that, by the way. Look, this is so fucking cool. I love this phone. I, I, should, I shouldn't throw it around as often. Dude, there are so many people that are going to stick by that product if you just stand behind it in these little, small ways. It matters. It counts. It, you know, it, it counts for something. And a lot of people are going to say you're just hating on them because you hate on that one company. You hate them, and you, you don't care about any of the stuff that Samsung does wrong. You don't care about what Lenovo does wrong. Lenovo is one of my favorite companies. Have I told you how much I love the ThinkPad? Have I told you how much I love the ergonomics of the ThinkPad, the durability of the ThinkPad, the liquid resistance of the ThinkPad, the keyboard of the ThinkPad, many of which are things that they screwed up in the past few years. And when Lenovo screwed those things up, I just beat, beat, beat into them. You know why? Because it's the right thing to do. When you like a product, when you really like a company or their products and you want to continue using them and you want to continue liking them in the future, what you need to do when they do something asininely dumb or stupid or just above and beyond just ridiculous, you need, to, you need to beat them a little bit. Not physically. I'm not saying go out there and you know, be, actually beat people. You know, just beat them up, beat up on them a little bit or on the internet, call them up and beat up on them a little bit. Maybe beat up on them a little bit legally so that they, they, they release an extended warranty program. But you gotta, you gotta do something. You gotta smack them around a little bit. Because if you don't smack them around a little bit, they'll just think it's good to do again and again and again. When Lenovo decides that they're going to make track point buttons that are like this instead of like this, when they decide to remove the volume buttons, when they remove the, the hot swappable bay that allows me to set a little switch in the bottom and take a drive out and hot swap drives back in there, when they remove my track point and my track point buttons and my function keys and and you got to say something about this. Can you imagine if nobody said anything about the Lenovo T440 and T540? We would still have computers right now where there is no track point. No track point. And for those of you who didn't grow up with the track point, I understand that you don't understand the superiority of that system. But the idea that I don't have to take my hand off the, tra off the keyboard, use the trackpad or off the keyboard to use the mouse and do this, that, and the other, being able to just keep my hands over here and do everything I need, that is amazing. That was this close to being destroyed. And the reason it wasn't destroyed is because a lot of people who loved Lenovo, not haters, but people who loved the ThinkPad and who loved Lenovo, spoke up. You like Apple. You love Apple. That's cool. That's good. That's continue being a fan. Continue enjoying their products. But when they, when they screw you, you got to say something. you got to say something. You can continue to love their products. You can say, I'm going to continue to buy their products. But you got to say something. Because if you say something, then we can fast forward 
to that point where, again, instead of this extended warranty for the iPhone 6 coming out in 2017, 18, or 19, let's get it to come out right now. Let's get all these people covered so that we'll have to deal with this. Because again, $150 phone. This thing is like 150 to 200 bucks. It's, 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 it's such a cheap piece of crap in so many ways. There's so many things that, but even with that being said, again, whoops. Still works. <sighs> That's it for today. Oh, somebody asked about the lighting. Somebody asked if they could actually see what it looks like, so I figure might as well answer that. Vandersteen. It's a Vandersteen speaker over here, and above it, This is what I look like without those lights when I have the shutter speed set to 1, 125, and the ISO set to either ISO 640 or ISO 800. And this is enough light for me to read. This is enough light for me to do a lot of things. But again, shutter 1, 125, ISO 640, 800, no. That's one light. And that's two. Those settings, I would literally be invisible with the camera on these settings without that light and that one. So I actually, I owned these fixtures already. I actually already owned these fixtures. So that fixture and that one I bought in 2011 or 2012 when I had the supply company and I wanted to take pictures of the screens. So I had taken pictures of screens with my cell phone and a flashlight. It looked like shit. I wanted the connector and the connector details, the PC board details to really pop out at you. So I bought those and I bought a camera. Camera got stolen long after I took the pictures. So I just, I, just, I just gave up on it. But these have been sitting in my basement and when I went to get some boxes in the basement the other day, I saw them and the lights that were inside were all these uh, CCFL bulbs that were just crushed and destroyed. So I figured I, I own the fixture. So I kicked them into place. You could probably see when I showed you that they're all bent. I had to kick, they're, they're round, so I had to kick it back into shape because they were just sandwiched and destroyed together since they were under pallets of boxes. Cleaned out the bulb stuff, and I bought six of these 25-watt LED bulbs on Amazon, some studio lighting, whatever. I wasn't going to buy lighting fixtures and all that crap from scratch, but if I already had stands, I already had fixtures, I figured I might as well buy bulbs. It looks really cool. I want to see if this lens... If this lens will make my work camera look better, I want to see, is it the lighting or the lens? Because there's something about this, the way this looks, that's just so much clearer than what I do at work. And this camera is like 490, 480 bucks when you buy it B-stock at Best Buy. And the camera at work is 2,300 bucks used. And this, I mean, it could be the lighting, it could be something different, it could be just the environment, but I, have, like, I feel like this camera looks better than the one I have at work. And it costs so much less money, like ridiculously less money. So one of these days I want to try this lens in the work camera. 
Maybe somebody could tell me, is the lens that comes with the Sony NEX EA50 by default worse than what comes with the Sony A5100? So at work, I have an NEX EA50. At home, I have an A5100. Usually, I'm sitting about three to six feet away from the camera. At home, I may adjust it sometimes, but maybe I'll have it over here. Usually, I have it over there, like this. Yeah, like something like this. And at work, at work, I usually have it, you know, I, I'm, I'm usually sitting maybe no more than three feet away, no more than three feet away from the camera. So I know that that lens is ridiculous because it could, something like, it goes all the way up to 200 millimeter. I don't need that at all. So I should probably get a different lens for work. But this, this honestly has really made me want to get something better for work because the quality here is just ridiculous. It's just, I need to learn something about photography other than, you know, higher shutter speed and lower ISO and more light equals better picture. But this looks really cool. I really should have done this sooner. Anyway, that's it for today.